different animals, I've tried to distill it down and make it pretty simple. So it may not be exactly the way that you've heard it before, but the wheel is a place of harmony and it doesn't make any difference which color because like everything else, native, it is specific to you and the color of the draws you may be different. <coughs> the medicine wheel is a tool for many things. It creates balance and harmony. Like all symbols and ceremony, it is a bridge. It's a bridge for the mind, it is a bridge to the spirit. There are many things in life that the logical mind cannot understand. Very careful. Hello. The logical mind cannot explain or understand God. It cannot understand love. It can't understand life. The left brain is rather like a computer. It has a great capacity. It can store an enormous amount of information. It can make enormous calculations, but it comes right down to it. It is only adding or subtracting one. The right brain looks at the whole picture holistic. 
And so sometimes in order to bridge that gap in our understanding, we must use the language of the whole brain. Signs, <coughs> symbols, omens, dreams, and visions. But like all tools of the spirit, ceremony or objects, they are crutches. And the true shaman must surpass at some point all crutches until they can reach that place <clears throat> through their mind. Or well, what would you do if you did not have that object or if you did not have time to make a ceremony? You must reach that place or you will forever remain stagnant. But all these tools are like old friends, and they are always there for us, for you, whenever you need them. There was a belief that in each of the directions there was a spirit, and why not? Identity creates entity, and entity creates form. So journey with me now on a path that is as old as creation. But still very much alive. I ask but one thing of you, that of each thing that I speak, you will see it in your mind's eye and live it with me. But the mind's eye is the true bridge. We come to the place of the East place of the rising sun. This is represented by the color yellow, sometimes red. This is the morning, but it is also the spring. Its totem animal is the eagle or the hawk. This is the time of germination and the time of budding. It is the time of the dawn chorus when the birds awake and begin to give their song of thanksgiving. It is a place of new beginnings, a place of innocence and a lot of prejudice. It is a place of renewal and inspiration. It is a time of tenderness. This is the place of birth. And it is the place of physical invisibility. It is a time of thanksgiving. And the new shoots break free of their seeds and begin to grow very rapidly. They can never be put back into that seed. It's a time of first form. You travel a bit further and you come to the place of the southeast. Quarter directions are just as important as the four directions sometimes more powerful, but very subtle. Most things that are very powerful are very subtle. This is the time of late morning, late spring. 
It is a time of rapid growth and out movement. This is the time of childhood and teen years when you can't sit still. This is the time of the sacred question when you are forever asking questions. A child who is learning so rapidly they question everything. You move to the south that is represented by red, sometimes yellow or green. Sometimes its animal is the coyote, sometimes it is the mouse. This is the time of summer and of high noon, perhaps your 20s to 30s. It is a time of fruiting, a time of work. Adulthood, a time for considering and having children, a time for considering all that you've been taught in your youth, distilling it, analyzing it, figuring out what you believe and what you will pass on to your children. <coughs> With the help of the coyote. Who teaches you. It is a time of mistakes. It is a time of joy. It is a time of emotions. It is a time of strength when the grain fields are lush to their potential. When you feel that you can put the world, you feel your highest energy, you feel invincible. <coughs> it is a time of scurrying and awareness like a mouse. And it is a time when all things shift their attention from the flowers to the, from the flowers to the fruit and the seeds of the future or fall will not be far away. But it is also a time of silence. For at high noon, the birds begin to hush their song. It is too hot to sing. <coughs> it is a time of the sacred silence. It is a time of communication. You began to move into the southwest <coughs> late summer, afternoon, a time for slowing down when the heat of the day drives most of the animals from the landscape to the shade. Perhaps your 40s to your 50s. A time when you begin to turn knowledge into wisdom. The hazy, shimmering days of summer. It is a time yet for learning. Perhaps menopause. Perhaps midlife crisis. These things are not a weakness but a strengthening, not a deterioration, but an expansion, a growth, and a strength. It is here in the Southwest that you turn and those times approach. And as you move forward, you come to the West the place of the setting sun. The color of this place is black, which is not a negative color, but like white, 
holds every color of the spectrum. It is a color of strength, like the bear, who also represents this point. Late into fall, this is a place of strength, and this is the place you turn to for strength. From your 60s to your 70s, a time of slowing down, a time of wisdom, a time when the fruit is heavier than the vine, a time of work but also a time of rest, a time of play, a time of celebration and thanksgiving for the harvest, for the bounty that will pass you through the winter. It is a time for reflection as you watch the coming of the night to reflect on the actions of your day, to make peace with the actions of your day so that you will not take them to your bed It is a time of preparation for the coming winter and a time of coming together when the chill of the evening drives the family together around the fire. It is a time of Thanksgiving. You go into the Northwest in the late fall and in the twilight when the golden leaves of the fall we are balls of ground and blanketed to protect the earth from the coming winter leaving the limbs fair and white and brittle. This is a place of a meeting of light and dark. It is a place where reality is sometimes indiscernible and where distraction diminishes when you can no longer define the outline of the things around you. And when distraction diminishes, communication opens. This is a place where the tracks of our ancestors begin to mingle with our own. And where the actions of that day are played before our eyes. You move slowly into the north. Its color is white. It is purity. And its animal is the buffalo. It is winter. It is night. It is a time for sleeping. Serving energy. It is the time of the elders when their hair becomes like the snow. It is a time for dreaming, and for learning the lessons of your dreams, for dreaming of the past, and for dreaming of the future yet unborn. It is a time of gathering strength when the earth pulls all of her reserves deep within her to prepare for the seeds of the coming spring. It is a time of strength.
stories. When a cold drives you, you all know like the fire. And here, the stories and the wisdom are shared before they are lost. It is a pinnacle of change. It's a time of hope. But is that time when the winds blow the fiercest and hope burns the brightest? Other times it is not needed. It is a time for letting go of the old and it is a time for making peace. We come to the last direction, the northeast. Late winter. Pre-dawn. That time of the night when the sky is the darkest. It is the place of the two-way road of coming and going, of death and of life. It is where that time of year when the worst blizzards can blow, late winter, but even the fiercest of the winds cannot stop the warmth of the thaw. It is that time of night when you sleep the soundest. But your subconscious mind knows that you must soon wake. It is that time of night when your dreams are the most vivid. It is here that you return to your ancestors and others leave the side of the Creator to spend a day with the earth. It is the place of conception. And in the center around which the wheel turns, but is never far away from. You find the meeting place of the Creator and the Earth. No matter at what point you may be on the wheel, you're never far from this center. You will complete this wheel many times in your life. You complete it every day. For everything has the wheel within it. At some point in every business, in every relationship, in every pregnancy, in every childbearing, you will find yourself at some point on this wheel. You may find yourself in the south, the place of hard work and joy. Or you may find yourself in the northwest, where the ghost walk beside you. This wheel can be used to understand, put things into perspective. You may look back and find that you have skipped a place on the wheel, perhaps in a marriage. You started in the Northeast and you went directly to the south 
Perhaps you skipped spring and you find that you have to go back and bring the dawn course into your life. Complete the wheel. Well, you can call on those that represent each direction to find shape for them, find understanding. To understand the wheel is to understand cycles. But to truly understand the wheel, you must begin to see it not as two-dimensional, not as flat on the ground, but as a sphere, not as two-dimensional, but as undimensional. That was outstanding, Renee. <laughs>